Okay, let's look how this QBC file, QWC file is generated. Let's go back to the code. Okay, the main. controller here that kind of does everything is right here app controllers qb sdk controllers now controllers it's it's a convention you may not have this in your tech stack or your web app that you're doing um know that it's just kind of like what is how you receive like when i click this you can see this url down on the lower left there um, that's what, uh, there's a routing part of Rails and it routes to controllers. Okay, so when you click on this link, it's going to somewhere in Rails, they call it a controller. You'll have something similar in your environment. And I went over these. These are going to be the basic SOAP actions that you need to support. The SOAP client expects all of these. So you're going to need to implement them on your stack too. Now for Ruby, we're, we're taking these in and you know, mapping them to methods. So this action comes in. But anyway, let's stick, stay on topic because I have an action here that is right here, the QWC action. And let me go back over here. Let me just open up the the routes file. So these two, this action is the one in question right here. And this is what you want to implement as well. So this is what it looks like. It needs to have all this stuff in here. It's important, um, let me just jump right to this owner ID and file ID. These just need to be standard, like GUID format. I have this stuff in here, this alter stuff. So if you put in a param in the URL to generate this QWC file, you could alter the owner ID and file ID and that that error will come up because you cannot have two applications on here with the same owner ID and file ID. All right, just so you know that if you um you you, you might have a case where you're just going to have one that like this won't come up, but surprisingly it does because they will delete the application sometimes and try to get a new QWC file going and you'll get this owner ID error. Don't, not a big deal. I would throw it in though as you're making this. Um, we'll see what this, I'm going to go and generate this actual file so we'll uh, can get out of some of this code, but you'll need to generate the app URL, um, the app support protocol. Uh, it needs to be HTTPS. Now we can get away with this in a development environment because we're using the local host, as I mentioned in a, in, in a prior video. So you can talk to the QuickBooks web connector if you have local host in the URL. You don't need just regular HTTP. You don't need HTTPS. If you don't do that, even in development, you're going to need to make HTTPS on your server. Okay, I suggest going this route. You should be able to do it. Uh, on your environment. Other than that, you're going to use like NGROC or something like that, or if you have good support uh, for doing um, SSL in development. Could be a pain, but if you go this method of putting local host in the URL, now this is the website I'm going to, but the same is going to hold true for when we set up the web connector and this file gets generated. So take a look at that code right there to when you're generating your uh, QWC file should be something like this where you're generating it on the fly. You don't have, need to have unique numbers for other clients. Like it doesn't matter. This is just per QuickBooks web connector that it needs to be a unique owner ID and file ID. Okay, so let's go back. 
Let's go back to the app. So this would be like your app. And let's click on this. And I got some uh, test ones there. Let me just do app three for this. I don't know what the other ones are. I can just do it like this because it's going to save it with the right. Okay, so that's in downloads. Let me go to the Ubuntu here and get a fresh window. So this is going to be uh, under downloads. Uh, where, did, where is this? Where did it save to now? Okay, I just had it go right into the local disk where Oh, it's in, okay, user minimals down, downloads. All right, well, I should be able to get to that with just using the home. But maybe I need to do this. Okay, and app three. Let's take a look at what was generated here. Uh, okay, so we, no, we don't need an app ID. We just need the, uh, for the app URL, we just need a, um, a, a call to the WSDL, which I, um, here's the route here. So you need to generate a WSDL. You'll, you'll see that in your SOAP library that you're going to use. Um, you'll see how to do that. And then we have this business and the scheduler runs every two minutes. I'll go over that in a second, but it's very simple. Okay, now I'm gonna need to change, I think I'm gonna have a file ID problem like right away. So let me try to add this. And you can also double click it. Okay, yeah, let's just do that because you probably tell your clients to do that or they can double click it right from where they download it. So let me just open that up right there That'll be associated to um, QuickBooks Web Connector. Now you see we're getting the file ID problem. Like that's kind of a pain in the neck. You may want to generate, it, you, you, it doesn't happen a lot. Okay, like I said, it doesn't happen a lot. I don't want to go off on a tangent on this, but it does happen. Um, and I was just going to say, well, you might want to generate everything randomly, but you don't have to do that because it doesn't happen. It's kind of rare. Don't worry about doing that right now. Um, let me go and change just some digits here like let's just change this to s we'll change this to eight and i'll save it and go back to here uh, back to um let's see downloads and they can just click it again Okay, so now it's giving me a better prompt. Here we're getting, um, you know, trying to load. This is good. Yes, if you want to um, replace. You know, I'm going to say replace because I already got one in there. I don't want it. And um, let's see if it allows me to replace. Okay, it does. I think so. I think it will. You'll get this standard screen right here. I just hit OK. Um, oh, we're having a problem. OK, I think it's going to s not allow the application to be added because there's. Um... Now let's take a look on why it's doing this. Um, let's create a duplicate application because maybe it just doesn't like maybe I can't replace this application that I'm pointing right here to the background because it's hooked up to the other company file. So, oh wow, okay, we're getting it again. Huh. 
Huh, I wonder why it is doing that. Let's try one more time. Do app three. Okay, um, let's check the logs. I'm able to access quick quick be over for the first time in application. Yes, I haven't seen that recently anyway let me go back to the so we got this run let's see if this helps us at all this is the log file it told me to do it um and i'm seeing here that it's saying that right here that we we're having a is, is invalid Data validation error, huh? Okay, so maybe what I changed it to was was not good. So let's um, go back to that. And let me just change something else here. Let's change that to D. But I think I always change that those front ones, uh, meaning that this front prefix. I usually just change those. So um, let me try to open it here now. Okay. Okay. So it did add at that time. So was something wrong with the? Um, Let's, why is this not removing? Okay, so there was something wrong, I guess, with that previous entry that was there and had something to do with the owner ID and the file ID. Okay, let's, I'm gonna stop this part. We'll do a part three and start connecting to your SOAP server.